Thanks very much. And I, I should start, preface all of this by saying, you know, um, as some people here know, writing books is a lot of work, and sometimes it's nice to have support, both emotional and uh, in terms of, I think they call it dinero in some places. Um, uh, and I was very nicely supported both by um, ISIS and Panon University and uh, Bajmani University as well in, in the work on this over the last some years. So I'm very thankful for all of that. Hungary has been an important part of my life in this regard. Um, <laughs> you know, as I was listening to the two of you, I was thinking, you know, the simple issue is that humans are nuts. They're crazy, you know. <laughs> And they're crazed by language, among other things. I mean, they, you know, people take language really seriously. I remember when I, you know, when I was, shall we say, in the game, um, if somebody said, you know, which was always a delight to hear, somebody said, I really love you, part of my brain would go, what does that mean, right? <laughs> We want to hear these things all the time. We want to hear wonderful things, how beautiful we are, how intelligent, etc. And probably that has some sort of survival function, at least at an earlier period. But, but we really are crazed by language, and we take the categories literally, right? We tend to think we are what other people tell us we are. And I, you know, it, it, from a very early age, um, I always thought this was a bit crazy. And um, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, as both Yuri and, and uh, Bella indicated, you know, I spent, so I spent the first um, several decades of my life in the United States trying to also see if it could be made to work. And I decided because my, all of my grandparents are Irish and I was therefore de facto an Irish national, I left the United States almost 40 years ago now, 40 years, 30 years ago feels like 40. Um, uh, and, you know, I be became Irish, you know, learned how to drink Guinness and all that, right? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you have to do these things properly, right? Um, so <laughs> what, what's, there was a wonderful story about the way in which identity plays out. And I taught for five years at the University of Ulster in Northern Ireland, which gave me an extraordinary education in the problematic character of identity. Right? Because people often know who they are by knowing who they are not. I knew who I was in family terms from a very early age, right? I, you know, we were Catholics, boy, uh, you know, and we were Irish, etc. all those kinds of things. My father used to say things like that. There are several verities about us. You're Irish, you're Catholic, and you're a Democrat. You know, okay, write it down, you know. When I went to Northern Ireland, what was really funny was the way in which people really took this seriously, right? So you, <laughs> it was a story that made the rounds. The one thing that saves Ireland is its humor <laughs> and the irony that they have about their circumstances. But the conflict in Northern Ireland, uh, you know, it's, it's often characterized as Catholic versus Protestant. In some ways, it's more nationalist versus Unionist with Great Britain. Um, but um, th those line up, you know, nationalist and Catholic and, and uh, Unionist and Protestant. So uh, the, st the story that uh, you're, one of the stories you can hear in that part of the world is, there's a Jewish tourist who's making his way around Belfast, right? Um, and he turns a corner and he finds himself in the middle of a demonstration, you know, leaders of the demonstration come up to him and say, are you a Protestant or a Catholic? Oh, I'm not either. I'm Jewish. Great consternation, given that there are not that many Jews in, in Ireland, right? And so, so, so the leaders of the demonstration come back and huddle with each other for a minute or two, and then one of them comes up, but are you a Protestant Jew or a Catholic Jew? <laughs> right? I mean, but that's the way it works. I mean, the idiocy of this stuff is absolutely incredible and you know ultimately the idiocy is that that you're meant to kill people on behalf of that kind of really profound analysis right um, so uh, that has been ever, ever since I was 
young. And I start this book by talking about sitting, sitting in the courthouse when, when I had, you know, I said, I'm not going to go to Vietnam. And I just said, I've decided I'm a conscientious objector. And so they said, no, you're not. <laughs> and so it was, it was either refuse the orders directly and then face a military prison, which would have been just delightful, I'm sure, um, or take legal action against them, which they found rather unprecedented. So I did, I sued the Secretary of Defense. The case went through the district court, you know, where you have just one judge, and then, <laughs> then it went to the US Court of Appeals. I'm beginning to think this is really something, you know? I, mean, you know, I was 25 and I didn't know, you know. So here we are, I, I'm sitting in the courtroom, and I'm listening to the three judges, and they sit way up high, so you're meant to feel you know, like a, a plebe. Uh, they sit way up high, and the judge from the Justice Department in Washington, not the, uh, the, the, the um, attorney for the government, was from the Justice Department in Washington, not a local district attorney, right? And my attorney, and all my friends are there. You know, It's a room like this, right? <laughs> and I'm sitting all by myself in that courtroom, very austere courtroom, right? And they start talking about this guy, Skelly. And I'm thinking, who, are they, who is that, right? Who is, you know, because I had become a legal abstraction, right? And so, you know, you're condensed into this character. And, you know, law, and the legal process does this much more than Google or Facebook, right? Which are doing it for all of us right now. Um, and also, friends, family, etc. They decide who you are, right? And we all do it, you know? We, we establish especially psychological categories for people, you know? He's very narcissistic, or he's whatever, or, you know, etc. And we actually then start to relate we create that. We create that other, that other person. And we miss their fundamental humanity. And it's one of the reasons why I'm so concerned about language. Because we use language promiscuously. Right? We don't stop and think about how we define things. And if we would stop and do that, and really think about how we construct realities, I think we would make a real breakthrough. Right? So that's the story.